In the fictional universe of Warhammer 40,000, the Adeptus Astartes colloquial, space marines are genetically modified superhuman warrior monks, the elite warriors of the Imperium of Man. Space Marines have been one of the starter armies in almost every box edition of Warhammer 40,000, Space Hulk, and Epic. They also feature heavily in other games workshop products, such as books, films, and video games, and are central to the universe's setting. Fictional characteristics Space Marines lead a lifestyle comparable to monastic warrior orders or martial elites from various periods of human history, dividing their time between combat training, ritual contemplation, and the waging of war. From the time of their initiation to their deaths in battle, they spend their entire multi-century lives fighting for their religion centering around the deified, extremely powerful emperor of mankind, and fight also for the survival of mankind. They have been genetically and physically enhanced with organ implants and other non-mechanical augmentations collectively referred to as gene seed that ultimately derive from the Emperor's own flesh. They are 8 feet tall meters in their power armor, a fully powered and ceramite-crafted shell of armor, and wield the finest small arms weaponry available to the Imperium. Recently introduced are the Primaris Space Marines, an even more powerful variant of Adeptus Astartes clad in new MKX armor. They were created by the Mechanicus Archmagios Belisarius Call, and are largely seen in action with new chapters of Primaris Space Marines constantly being created and existing chapters welcoming Primaris reinforcements. In-universe origins In the Warhammer 40k universe, the Emperor of Mankind is described to create 20 Primarchs, genetically engineered superhumans possessing immense physical and psychic power second to only his own. Created from modified strands of his DNA, each Primarch was, in essence, one of the Emperor's sons and each individual's genome serves as a template for their respective legion of space marines. In the fictional timeline of the 40k universe, during the late 20th millennium AD, the Emperor uses the Space Marine Legions to conquer the scattered human-inhabited worlds of the galaxy, uniting them under the banner of the Imperium of Man and reuniting the Primarchs with their legions in a 10,000-year campaign known as the Great Crusade. As the campaign drew to a close, eleven Primarchs and their legions, under the leadership of the character Warmaster Horus, convert to the worship of the evil Chaos Gods and their demon servants, rebelling against the Emperor and sparking a civil war known as the Horus Heresy. During the final hours of the war, Horus is slain by the Emperor, but not before mortally wounding his opponent. Gravely injured, the Emperor is rescued by Primarch Rogel Dorn and connected to a life support system called the Golden Throne, run by the very essence of those who are sacrificed to its machinery, where his body was maintained in a state of slow decay for over 10,000 years. The rebels, referred to as traitor legions, are ultimately defeated after the Warmaster's death. They retreated to the nightmarish Eye of Terror, a realm completely enveloped by warp storms, though they continue to harass and combat the Imperium as Chaos Space Marines, attracting their demonic allies to real space through unspeakably horrid acts. 
The Sons of Horus, renamed the Black Legion, fight the Long War against the Imperium with other traitor legions, seeking to finish what Horus started. The legions of space marines who remained loyal to the Emperor were restructured into smaller but still relatively affiliated units called chapters, consisting of roughly 1,000 space marines, under Primarch Rebute Gilliman's Codex Astartes. This made future mass rebellions unlikely, especially with most of the legions rendered without the guidance and watchfulness of their primarch. Topic: <laughs> Creation of a Space Marine. Recruits are chosen from the best and most loyal among humanity. However, they must be adolescent males as deviating age or sex will result in guaranteed death if the subject in question has physical or mental mechanical augmentation attempted. The potential recruit is first subjected to testing, including tissue compatibility tests and psychological screening. Relatively few get past this initial selection process. Those that do pass are termed neophytes, and the process continues with the surgery, indoctrination, conditioning, and training that will make them space marines. Those that survive but fail from surgery or screening are either retained as chapter serfs or sometimes mechanically augmented and turned into semi sentient servitors to serve the chapter, mainly under the command of Adeptus Mechanicus members of the chapter who perform most tasks involving creation or maintenance of technology. The surgical process takes a great deal of time and pain, sometimes even being lethal. The recruit receives gene seed implants, along with chemotherapy, hypnotherapy, and training necessary for allowing the functioning and development of the implanted organs. The implants transform their bodies and minds and give them near superhuman abilities. Some notable abilities and attributes include greatly enhanced strength, unnatural reaction times, much increased physical durability, strongly acidic saliva, a closed gland that is harvested by apothecary marines at death for new gene seed spores, and operating for long periods without sleep by temporarily switching off parts of their brains. After this implantation process is initiated and after associated training is taken, the recruit becomes a scout marine and charged with assassination, infiltration, reconnaissance, and other duties related to light and mobile forces. Some scout marines will go on to become vanguard space marines, specializing in stealth operations. Intense indoctrination and conditioning strengthens the recruit's resolve and increases mental capabilities, honing them into dedicated, merciless warriors that become fiercely loyal to the Emperor. After more general training and the completion of their mechanical augmentations, they join the chapter as full battle brothers a term used often by space marines to refer to others in their chapter. <laughs> <laughs> organization Space marines are organized into chapters which typically contain about a thousand space marines plus an unspecific number of initiates, support staff, and Adeptus Mechanicus maintenance units. The majority of chapters follow the organizational structure detailed in the fictional version of the Codex Adeptus Astartes. Typically, each chapter is arranged into ten battle companies of 100 soldiers each, led by a captain. 
The first company of a chapter is usually composed of veterans, privileged with suits of tactical dreadnought armor a.k.a. Terminator armor, and the Tenth Company is usually formed by newly recruited Marines serving as scouts, or fresh new battle brothers beyond the scout status. Currently there are at least four chapters which have numbers exceeding 1,000 Space Marines, the Black Templars, Exorcists, Grey Knights, and Space Wolves. Even then with their larger than normal troop count, these chapters' numbers pale in comparison to the original Astartes legions, the latter often having numbers reaching tens of thousands of men or more. Each chapter is a fully integrated, developed and very heavily equipped military unit, possessing incredible resources such as multiple starships, aircraft units, land vehicles such as tanks and transports, and even Imperial Knight mechs and Titan mechs when necessary they do not possess battleships or other sea-based forces as the tabletop game does not model sea combat. A chapter's main headquarters is its fortress monastery, which could either be a citadel located on a planet or a very large starship. Each chapter also rules one or more worlds from which they draw material resources, recruits, currencies, and other components of, for the chapter. Each chapter is led by a chapter master, chapter masters rank among the Imperium's highest elite. They are one of the few in the ranks of the Space Marines with the authority to order tasks such as an exterminatus, the total annihilation of a planet, its population, and its surface in the face of chaos demon corruption or becoming an anchor for particularly dangerous forces who can threaten the Imperium's existence on a segmentum-wide or galaxy-wide scale. Each chapter is almost completely autonomous, there is no higher authority that commands all space marines except the Emperor and the remaining Loyalist Primarchs. Nonetheless, any chapter may be subject to censure or even excommunication by the Inquisition should it waver in its duty to defend the Imperium or should it turn heretic and serve the Chaos Gods. Topic. Notable chapters The Ultramarines are the prototypical Space Marine chapter, and follow the template laid out in the core rulebook on Space Marines. Some chapters adhere to the Codex Astartes grudgingly, with only minor doctrinal leanings, such as the Imperial Fists. Conversely, there are many other chapters which have variant practices which are reflected in their rules. For instance, the Salamanders specialize in close-ranged firefights and flame weaponry, the Black Templars don't use psychers, the Blood Angels favor jump packs to glide quickly to the fight, and the White Scars favor motorbike and mounted assault tactics. Perhaps the most peculiar of all are the Dark Angels, with organization consisting of regular Space Marines, Deathwing Companies, and Ravenwing Companies. <laughs> <laughs> Specialist chapters There are two known specialist chapters in the Imperium, the Grey Knights and the Death Watch. The Grey Knights are a chapter formed in secret to specifically hunt demons from every shade of the chaos spectrum. Each battle brother is a sanctioned psyker who is adept at using force weapons, and they possess different tactics, training, and resources compared to typical Astartes. Similarly, the Death Watch is a chapter who specialize in hunting alien threats such as the Orcs, Eldari, or Tau. 
Unlike other chapters, the Death Watch is composed entirely of Marines seconded from other chapters. This is typically welcomed as the specialist training whilst serving the Death Watch is beneficial to the chapter when the Battle Brother returns to them. The Grey Knights and Death Watch work closely with the Inquisition, acting as the chamber's militant of the Ordo Malleus and Ordo Zenos respectively and act under their authority. Despite the chamber militant status, however, both chapters retain a significant degree of autonomy from the Inquisition. History Space Marines were first introduced in Warhammer 40,000, Rogue Trader by Rick Priestley, which was the first edition of the tabletop game rulebook. In this first incarnation, the religious themes that appeared in later editions were not as strong. They were described as having bodies and minds that had been toughened by biochem and psychosurgery. No mention was made of Gene Seed, which would be introduced as the fictional world was developed. The book Realm of Chaos, The Lost and the Damned, by Rick Priestley and Brian Ansel, 1990, was the first book from Games Workshop to give a backstory for the Space Marines. It introduced the original 20 Space Marine Legions, and the Primarchs, genetic fathers from which the Space Marines were cloned. It also first described the Horus Heresy, the civil war of the 30th millennium in which nine of the legions converted to the worship of the four main chaos gods. Two of the original 20 legions and their respective primarchs are not named and are described as redacted from Imperium history. Rick Priestley explained that this was to illustrate the Imperium's practice of erasing embarrassing or incriminating events and figures from history. This was a form of dishonor practiced by the ancient Roman Empire as damnatio memoriae. To me the background to 40k was always intended to be ironic. The fact that the Space Marines were lauded as heroes within Games Workshop always amused me, because they're brutal, but they're also completely self-deceiving. The whole idea of the Emperor is that you don't know whether he's alive or dead. The whole Imperium might be running on superstition. There's no guarantee that the Emperor is anything other than a corpse with a residual mental ability to direct spacecraft. It's got some parallels with religious beliefs and principles, and I think a lot of that got missed and overwritten. <laughs> Topic. Tabletop game mechanics Space Marines are a playable army in the tabletop miniatures wargame Warhammer 40,000, because each individual Space Marine is so powerful, their armies tend to be small, and thus a player can assemble a functional army for relatively little money and effort. In terms of playing style, they are a versatile army that neither excels nor fails at any particular tactic, though certain chapters do have variant rules. Individual units are typically not strongly specialized and can roughly substitute in other roles, meaning most mistakes and setbacks are easy to compensate for. Their tough armor and generally unspecialized weaponry means that they do not have to be maneuvered or stategized as carefully as units of other armies such as the powerful but frail Eldar. These qualities make them ideal for beginners, and may help them succeed more often in their early gameplay stages. Space Marines typically serve as an all purpose army despite chapters having variant doctrines, stratagems, and core rules. 
They can be used to make multiple differently organized and specialized armies of units from a single chapter. A functional army can be assembled for less than $100 with their start collecting, Space Marines boxed set. They are generally easy to play, and can be the first army most players hear about when getting into the Warhammer hobby. Topic. Video game appearances Space Marines are the most common protagonists in Warhammer 40,000 related video games. They have appeared in the following titles Space Crusade C64 1992 Space Hulk MS-DOS 3.3 or higher Amiga PC-98 1993 Terminator Armored Space Marines Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels PC PlayStation Sega Saturn 3DO 1996 sequel to Space Hulk Final Liberation Warhammer Epic 40,000 Microsoft Windows 1997 Chaos Gate Microsoft Windows 1998 Rights of War Microsoft Windows 1999 Fire Warrior PlayStation 2 Microsoft Windows 2003 Dawn of War 2004 and its expansion PAX Winter Assault 2005 Dark Crusade 2006 and Soulstorm 2008 Squad Command 2007 Dawn of War 2 2009 and its expansion PAX Chaos Rising 2010 and Retribution 2011 Space Marine 2011 Kill Team 2011 Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon PC iPad 2014 the Horus Heresy, Drop Assault, iOS, Android, and Amazon devices. Warhammer 40,000, Regicide, PC, Android, iOS, 2016. Warhammer 40,000, Space Wolf, Android, iOS, 2014. Warhammer 40,000, Storm of Vengeance, Android, 2014. Warhammer 40,000 Carnage Android iOS 2014 Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade Android iOS 2015 Warhammer 40,000 Eternal Crusade 2016 Space Hulk Deathwing PC 2016 Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 3 PC 2016 Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr PC Mac PS4 and Xbox One 2017 Topic <laughs> Films Ultramarines, a Warhammer 40,000 movie, 2010. Topic: Books. Space Marines are featured in numerous fantasy novels, predominantly published by Black Library, a division of Games Workshop. Topic. Trademark controversy In December 2012, Games Workshop claimed that any use of the phrase, Space Marine, on content other than their own infringed on their trademark of the term and requested that online retailer Amazon remove the e book Spots the Space Marine by MCA Hogarth.
The row received a lot of publicity during February 2013, with authors such as Cory Doctorow, Charles Strauss, and John Scalzi supporting Hogarth. Amazon restored the e-book for sale. <laughs>